All right, good morning. It's the 20th of June, early morning. Lynn's just stopped by the garage and uh, picked up the overdrive transmission for the TR4. He's also picked up his TR3 transmission, so I've got a little bit more space in the shop. A couple of differentials back there for a TR250 and a TR6. Lynn might need one of those, so might be digging those out at a later date as well. Anyway, uh, I did unpack the dash from the trunk of the car. Uh, we were over at Alin's yesterday. We picked this up and uh, brought it home to refinish it the best we can. So I thought I'd just give you a quick look of the dash and a little bit uh, closer look up of what it looks like today before we get starting the process of stripping this down and painting it back into its uh, original, uh, I guess there's a bit of a discussion piece. I think the early dashes were spa white and the later dashes were new white. But anyway, we're going to paint this dash white. I believe I have some paint from this car, I think. We're going to probably use that to paint the dash. It is not a concourse car, so I'm not too concerned about having the correct hue of white on the dash. I just want it to look better than it looks today. Um, the previous segment, you probably saw me refinishing the gauges for this, so that's, those are gonna look, when they, look good when they go back into the dash. Here are the other components. There's the little bezel for those uh, four main gauges. This is sort of like a plasticky finish. I'll see if this can clean up. Uh, I don't believe this is available anymore. So I think what guys do uh, is they actually crackle black paint this as a um, facsimile to this plastic coating. I think we're just gonna clean up the plastic coating and go with that. We're not too worried about it. Uh, for this little uh, section here, which is vinyl wrapped, I think what we'll just do is clean this up as best as possible and maybe give that some more glue to get that stuck down a little bit better. As far as the uh, switch plinth, again, it's a few scratches here and there. I am missing an ignition switch for here, but uh, everything else is there. Not pristine, but again, we're not going for a concourse car. We're just going for a good driver. So we'll fix that up as best as possible as well. Lower crash pads actually look to be in pretty good shape. We'll see if we can get those off in one piece. The vents uh, could be a little bit better. They're a little faded out. This one actually looks like it's been chewed on by a mouse. We're missing a piece over here. You can actually see the edge looks like it's been chewed on. Rodents, you know. Anyway, I don't have a replacement for that, so we're just going to go with that. It is what it is. Anyway, we'll strip all the other switch gear off and lights off and the vent lever uh, pull off the back. The uh, steering clamp uh, for or the steering column clamp as well, we'll strip that off. So we'll strip this dash down entirely. Probably take the glove box lid off as well, just to make it a little easier to work on independently from the dash. So there, anyway, that's a quick look or a quick overview of the dash from the 1962 TR4 before we get into stripping it. So here's your before, and we'll come back during the process and we'll show you the after, obviously. All right, guys, after about an hour or so, the uh, dash is completely disassembled. Uh, a little few tricks here and there, but it's pretty straightforward. There's a couple fasteners here up the front that are uh, hidden until you actually remove this front crash pad. And these fasteners actually hold those vent tubes on the back. So it's one thing you might want to look for. There's also on the, uh, on the pads themselves, the crash pads, there's a little pin here that keeps it on the corner that you need to bend up. It's a little clip, basically. Other than that, you're just screwed on by uh, screws here on the back, on this side, three screws on the back. And then they actually share the screw holes with the hinges for the glove box door here on this side in two locations and one in the corner here. That's for your lower crash pads. Other than that, um, the only other tricky little bit was getting this little uh, lever out for the vent. I actually had to drill out the rivet that was connecting those two pieces together. I actually used my little belt sander to get that off. And um, these little uh, bezels in here were fairly tight for the, uh, for the two lights here. I worked those from the back of the dash to get those out. And uh, yeah, so a little bit of rust here and there. Uh, not too bad of shape though, considering. So what we're going to do now is we're probably going to break out the DA sander and we are going to sand the face of this the best that we can. And then we'll probably break out some more detail oriented, uh, just sandpaper on a block or... Uh, even gray scotch brights probably in some locations to rough this up. We're going to do front and back paint. So uh, we'll clean this up too. get all the glue residue off the back here. 
uh, from where the crash pads wrap around and glue on the bottom. So uh, other than that, it looks pretty darn good back here. So I guess we'll uh, start sanding. All right, just uh, past 9 p.m. and uh, you normally cut off my noise at nine o'clock. So we're gonna be done for the night out here, but we made pretty good progress. We've got the, uh, the face stripped pretty much. We're gonna do a little rust converter over here and we have all the edges stripped along the top and bottom. So we still need to do some more detail sanding here in these areas. And then we'll flip it over at the back. And obviously we need to do some detail sanding inside here. And then we'll flip it over at the back here, get rid of that glue as mentioned, and give it a rough uh, sand, probably with just some uh, scotch braid on the back. And then this will be ready for some primer and eventually paint. Maybe we'll be able to get to that tomorrow. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow after work. All right, it's the next day, 7.30 a.m., and we're back out at it. And we're just going to clean up these little areas here. I need some more, a little bit more detail. And all we're going to use are these uh, little red Scotch-Brite pads. I've got a <coughs> kit of them here from my Dremel. So we'll use these little guys to help us get into the, uh, into the detail areas. These guys here, little bobbins. We'll use these to get into the detail areas to get that those areas cleaned up. I'd like to get this into uh, primer today and possibly paint later today. It's supposed to be a nice day outside, so I'm thinking of painting just outside the side door of the garage here. It's uh, obviously not going to be clear coated or anything, but just straight paint. So maybe we'll be able to do that uh, by the end of the day. So let's uh, get crack a lacking. All right, guys, we're making uh, progress on the dash. We've got it into high build primer and it's looking pretty good. We're just gonna be a, a quick uh, sand with uh, 400 grit and uh, then we'll hit it with the uh, white coat. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Like I said, we'll just give it a light sanding. It doesn't need too much. It actually looks pretty good. There's a few little nibs here and there from the primer that we can smooth out. Other than that, it looks pretty darn good. So just about to put this into a white coat. All right, well, we've got the uh, first coat of white painted on the dash. We're going to turn our attention now to the, uh, the ducting for the vents. And uh, I didn't really want to get too far into these, but uh, it looks like I'm going to have to disassemble these in order to get them. I want to paint them for sure. I mean, they're looking pretty rusty. So I just I technically could paint just right over the top of this rust, but that's not my style. I just have to sand it down a little bit, which will mean that... I also need to do uh, the interior of these ducts. These you'll actually probably see through the vent grills. So definitely want to do the inside. The outside you'll never see, but the inside you will. So that means that I'm going to have to probably take these mechanisms apart that uh, move the flaps inside. And these are these little uh, these little pins here. I hate these things, uh, like kind of spire nut style. Um, once you take these off, you never get them back on. I do have some spares somewhere. So I am going to, I think, take these apart to do a better job than I first anticipated that I was gonna do, and that's just me. I mean, I don't wanna overspray black on all these plastic parts either. So uh, I think I gotta do the right thing here and take these apart and uh, paint them properly. All right, quick update. We have one of the vents disassembled and we've just hit it with a bit of this uh, Rust-Oleum rust reformer. So uh, I actually wire brushed it first, just on the drill with the wire brushes, just to get the surface rust off and just give it a quick coat of that rust reformer. You can see it's doing its thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that, or here's the uh, other parts that basically I didn't wanna get any paint on except for the little flap mechanism. So we've painted that again with rust reformer. Then we're gonna hit it with a semi-gloss black. So we'll wait for this to dry and we'll go ahead and we'll paint that. I'm doing one at a, one side at a time not to get the uh, parts and components mixed up. So taking my time on these so I can get them back together properly. Um, out here, the dash has now been painted with two coats of white. Uh, so it's looking good. I don't see too many runs, maybe a tiny run here. And I got a little heavy with it, but it's looking pretty good. So we're just gonna let this sit out here and dry for a number of hours before we even attempt to touch it before we go to the next step. So I still have to do the glove box door, but uh, the dash itself is, uh, I think, looking pretty good. So we'll let that dry in the sun and uh, we'll come back in a few hours 
and see how we did. All right, welcome back. Now, Thursday morning, the 22nd of June, 2023. And it's about 6.30 in the morning, so we're going to do a little work before real work. And uh, we're probably going to assemble this vent back together. Hopefully, we can get it back together. Uh, we did bring the dash in overnight and just have it sitting here. It's dried up nicely, so it's looking good. Still need to do the glove box door, uh, so we'll do that probably later today, hopefully, as well. But until that point in time, we'll get this reassembled, and uh, then we'll take the other one apart and do the same thing, same process of de-rusting and uh, rust reforming and then painting with the semi-gloss black. So I also need to find something to do a seal on this one. This one still has the old, uh, I don't know if that's felt or horsehair, but that seal was intact. This seal is not, so I'll have to find something to work for that. But anyway, let's get to putting this one back together, and uh, we'll bring you back when that's done. All right, uh, we've got the uh, vent duct put back together, and we were able to use the uh, old clips successfully, so that is definitely looking good. It operates as it should. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this or not. Maybe I'm bringing the light a bit more, so... Uh, you can see the little foam piece, or not the little the felty piece there on the top. It stops the uh, the uh, air from coming in. So basically just a quick uh, spin, and that will open fully. Or well, actually, it opens a little bit more than full, and then back to halfway, or back to full, and then fully closed. So operates nicely now, whereas the old one actually barely operated at all because it's fairly rusty. So anyway, uh, that is looking much better than this was looking. So um, we'll fix this one up now and do the same process with the uh, rust reformer and then the semi-gloss black after we uh, do a little bit of wire brushing to get rid of that loose rust. So happy with that. And uh, the last thing to do obviously to fit that uh, little piece of uh, horse hair, maybe we'll do that now just so you can see how that fits around there. I'm gonna actually probably have to break out a little bit of glue to fasten that back on there, but uh, let's put that back on now. All right, there's the little uh, felt piece installed around the edge. And like I said, we'll just glue this in place just so it uh, stays in. We'll glue it in a couple spots uh, where it fits up against the uh, the dash uh, fascia. So uh, we'll have to come up with something for the other one. Like I said, this is missing on the other side. So we'll do the best we can to recreate this with some other material that we have. Oh, scotch Bright's looking pretty close. Yeah, I just had to have a little laugh. If you watch some of my previous videos, you know I haven't had very much success with these type of clips and me not losing them. You know, when you put them under tension, of course, they pop off and go everywhere and then generally they get lost. And usually a pile of something like that over there and they go to the bottom of the bin and never to be seen again. So guess what? Well, it popped off. So the good thing is I have good hearing. So I heard something fly over my head behind me and hit the garage floor, the little tinkling sound so i figured well i'll have a quick look for it and see if i can find it usually that's in desperation but so we come all the way over here all the way over here and look where i found can you believe that so lucky to find that that thing flew from way over there way over here and we'll pick it up and go on to the next one all right, that second vent, our duct, is painted in the semi-gloss black. We'll just let that dry before we reassemble. The dash door is outside uh, with one coat of primer on it, so we'll do a second coat of primer on that shortly. Uh, going back to this little seal piece that we were talking about that's missing uh, on the this vent over here, actually, I did find a small piece of it that had sort of torn off. Now... I'm kind of one uh, guy to not throw stuff away and I always kind of keep stuff from other projects. So I'm just going through my bag of uh, weather stripping, foam ceiling strips that I've used in the past projects and I always keep stuff together. So I actually found a few strips of the factory felt. This is from uh, the bonnet of my 250, I think. And I actually found, look at this, this strip here which I think will be perfect for us to do a reproduction seal around that vent over there. So good, never throw stuff out. Or, 
I also have this. I mean, we could just go with a modern seal. Maybe that's probably a better idea. Just go to this rubber foam self-stick weather seal. It's probably a better idea. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Might just go with this since I have it and it's approximately the right thickness. All right, just taking a quick look at the uh, dash and it's ready to be assembled. So we're gonna take you through the process to do that. We do have the door over here uh, just drying. Uh, a little bit of a dent in there, you see that? Probably should have body worked that, but hey, it is what it is. Not gonna worry about it now. Anyway, I think we're ready to start the reassembly phase of this project. Uh, I did get the other vent tube reassembled. So it's sitting over here on the workbench ready to go. Now there is a particular order that you need to uh, assemble this in. And it's basically the reverse of the disassembly. I know for a fact that the glove box door hinges need to go in first because you cannot get them out. Uh, basically these hinges here, they need to go through the slots in the dash before the tubes go in for the vents. Uh, otherwise there's not enough clearance to pull them out. So. I've got some metal polish. We're gonna polish these up a little bit just to make them look a little bit better. And those will be the first things that we reinstall on the dash. So let's get to it. All right, here's where the glove box hinges go and they actually run through a slot that runs to the, to the front of the dash. You have to make sure that they're in the right orientation. Like I said, these need to go in first because this bracket, uh, maybe this one doesn't, but this one does for sure as it will foul on the uh, vent tube as you try to maneuver it around to get it through the uh, slot in the front of the dash. So those are in place loosely. We'll just let them sit there uh, knowing that they're done. I think what we'll do now is we'll go after the actual uh, plastic vents that go in these spots here and they're just secured with a couple, couple of uh, J clips or spire nuts, whatever you want to call them, and a couple of screws so they don't fall out. So we'll go ahead and we'll install those now. Now those are not the greatest looking things, but it is what it is. We're gonna go with what came out of the car. All right, here are the vents, and they are secured through these little J-clips that fit on these holes on the top and bottom here. So we're gonna put those clips on, then we've got the four screws that secure them in place standing by. So we'll go ahead and we'll add those vents in now. All right, vents are in place, secured with the two little screws, one top and one bottom. So this one fared a little bit better than the other side, although it does have some little uh, mice chewy bits in the back side of it. So that's looking good. Move on to the next thing. All right, we did decide to go with the more modern foam seals on these. So we've got those fitted up nicely. So just a little bit proud of the edge. You can probably see there around, all the way around the outside. So when they fit against the back of the metal fascia, it compresses. So we have the other one installed here. So it's a little bit uh, difficult, but there's a couple of spire nuts that go on the back. There is one fastener down here that fastens the vent in first. And then there's a couple of spire nuts on the back and there's a couple of screws that go through the front of the dash to hold that in place. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that here. You can see the two holes here that that vent attaches to. And uh, down here is one of the other areas that attaches directly through the base of the metal on the vent. All right, the vent tubes are in and uh, secured. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna fit the lower crash pads and uh, the dashboard actually picks up the studs for the, or the dash, dashboard hinges pick up the studs that are used for the lower crash pad. So we can't do the dash door until we actually do the lower crash pad. So we're gonna do that now. It is gonna entail us having to glue some stuff. So anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clean up the crash pads and then we'll come back and we'll figure out what needs glue, what doesn't and go from there. Make sure we have the hinges uh, in this assembly correctly. So I don't have to take it apart again. So I'm hoping they're correct. I think they are, but you never know until you actually try and put it back together. All right, here's a quick look of that lower crash pad. So it goes through these holes down here on the bottom and picks up these studs. Now, as mentioned, these studs will actually serve to anchor the hinge for the glove box door. So you can also see here that these little wings on here. So these are gonna get glued around the side of this metal dash and around to the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some glue here on these little flaps. And then we're just gonna be using this uh, contact cement and uh, we'll let it set up and then we'll wrap the dash accordingly around to the back. That's the plan anyway. See if we can put it together. 
All right, the lower crash pads are installed on both sides. So they pick up, I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. So on the passenger side, it picks up the glove box brackets or the glove box hinges. And one more in here down in the corner. We'll glue this down afterwards. And then on this side, there are three pickup locations, one, two, and three to bolt those on the back. So if you need to exchange those out, basically you gotta unbolt them from the back of the dash. All right, on to the next thing. All right, dash is installed and uh, you can actually move the bottom hinges a little bit to compensate for where the door lands in the opening. That's about as good as I can get it. Gaps are not bad all the way around. Unfortunately, I don't have the lock for it. So that's coming in my parts order. So I guess we can move on to the next step. I know I have a clamp to put on the back of the dash here. I know I have these two lights to put in. I have this, uh, I think that's a rheostat uh, over here. I'm not sure, it might be a dash light uh, rheostat. Um, so we've got to do that as well. And uh, yeah, we're running out of stuff to put on this dash. Obviously, of course, we need to get to the gauges, but that will be at the end of this. So let's put whatever is left in the parts bags over there back on the dash and then we'll come back and we'll figure out what to do next. All right, we're gonna put these lights back in the dash and we've cleaned up the bezels a little bit with some polish. So green on the left, red on the right in these tow holes up here. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. All right, little rheostat button is back in place. Let's work on this uh, clamp for the steering column, which goes on the back of the dash. So we'll attach that. And then we have this vent piece that operates the uh, vent on the scuttle. So we still got to do that. So let's go ahead and do that now. And just a quick video of how that clamp assembly clamps to the bottom of the dash, just with these two uh, nuts here. And you've got this stabilizer link that goes out to the uh, support under the dash for the steering uh, column. So that's what that looks like. I might take that off temporarily. It uh, just makes it a little bit more difficult to work on the dash. So that's how it goes. I think we'll just detach it for now and remember to put it back on once we put this back in the car. And I think I'll also wait to put the uh, vent mechanism pull on. Uh, it's fairly straightforward how this goes on anyway. So I'll probably leave that until we're ready to re reinstall it in the car. So I guess the next thing I can do is uh, start working on getting the gauges back in the dash at least temporarily anyway, to see what they look like. So I think we'll move this project inside to the coffee table and go from there. All right, I think we'll do one more job out in the garage before we go in for the night. So uh, we've got the uh, center gauge cluster panel. And what I wanna do is I just wanna pull out the ashtray surround and give this a quick polish. And we'll clean up this uh, black plastic as best as we can. We'll probably use some Aerospace 303 to clean that up as best as we can. So right now we want to pull this chrome piece out. So it's just a couple of screws here in the back of the ashtray. If you want to get the ashtray out, it's just a little, a little uh, thing you push up on here to basically release the ashtray to pull out. So there it is there, out of the way. We'll grab a screwdriver, release this, polish it up, put it back in, head inside. Yeah, it's getting a little crazy. So <laughs> a little plastic or Bakelite ashtray was looking a little worn. So we sanded that down and we've given it a quick coat of semi-gloss black. So we'll let that dry while we go inside and we play with the gauges and put those back in the dash. And we'll come back out and retrieve it later on. Crazy, crazy. All right, there's the uh, center console. Unfortunately, that's the best it uh, will clean up without me attempting to paint this. And I don't think that'll go over well. So we're just gonna leave it as is. Uh, this piece here, we're going to come back and work on another day. We'll clean this up best as we can. I thought about rewrapping this with some vinyl, but I think we're just going to leave it as is. It'll match the patina of the uh, center console uh, or the gauge cluster. And then this piece over here, we may actually have a go at rewrapping this or at least trying to save the vinyl and re-gluing this because it looks pretty awful. I do have some more vinyl if needed, but I'd kind of like to kind of like to keep the same patina on all three pieces if possible all right now comes the fun part after all the hard work we're going to put those uh, gauges that we worked on a few days ago back in the dash and see how that looks so uh, we have our gaskets for the rear of the gauges standing by so each of the back of the gaskets gets a sort of a, like an o-ring behind them so we'll go ahead we'll put that in we've got our clamps over here standing by so we'll put those back in action and we'll get these gauges put back in the dash, at least temporarily. All right, guys, we're just going to put an end to this video. We now have the dash completely reassembled. 
with the exception of things like the glove box lock. I mentioned the center plinth. We're really not going to do much with that. We'll just clean it up the best we can. But everything else is uh, looking pretty good here. Uh, again, not concourse, but that's not what we're going, going for. Uh, we're just looking for a good, clean uh, interior on the car. So I think this will suffice. So yeah, happy with that. So um, one more job checked off the list on the 1962 TR4 project. And uh, we'll see what we can get up to next on that project. I've been doing some uh, body work uh, on the car, and that will probably be the video that follows this dash video. So until then, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you then.